So now this kid, Kyle Rittenhouse, he's 17 years old. He's a troubled kid from a troubled home. He yearns to be a policeman. We know people like this. Someone buys him a rifle because he's too young to buy one himself. He joins some veterans who are patrolling the city and keep it from burning down. It's vigilante action. And I'm not in favor of vigilante action per se, except the police have deserted their duty in this town. In some sense, who can blame them? Because they're being told that they're the bad guys. They're the evildoers. They go out into this place and somebody gets killed. But these are radicals out on the street, you know, causing this trouble, setting fire to places. And, you know, when they call it mostly peaceful, it's a misunderstanding of the nature of violence. Violence is a when people say, oh, speech is violence, silence is violence. Really, you're tempted. Obviously, you shouldn't, but you're tempted to just punch them in the nose and say, that's violence. Can you tell the difference? Because violence, you know, I, I have punched people and I have been punched. And violence is a very, very different thing. It's a new category of action that has nothing to do with silence or protest or anything. And when, you know, it's like it, it really is like you're married for 20 years and you only beat your wife up oh, maybe five or six times. It's a mostly peaceful marriage. No, it's not. No, it's not. This is, again, calling evil good and good evil and daring you daring you to say what I am saying right now, it's a lie. All of it's a lie. Every bit of it is a lie. Not just this incident, not just that incident, but all of it is a lie. So this kid, Kyle Rittenhouse, is watching this happen. And of course, you know, the lies make everything worse. When people are telling you that things are peaceful and they're burning, you sort of get angry. You know, you sort of start to lose your sense of reality and and you have to demand to have reality back. So he goes with a, uh, he goes and joins a veterans group that is policing the city, trying to keep the city from being burned down. He's out there with his long gun. People start to attack him. They see him. They start to attack him. These are all white people. They're all white people. One of them is a crazy, he's got a, uh, he's got bipolar disorder. He is a homeless person. He has just gotten out of prison. He is, has been, uh, he has committed several acts of anal rape on children. This is not a great guy. He attacks Rittenhouse. Uh, the other guy has also, uh, you know, was, uh, he's more of a, he's a harder figure to categorize. Uh, he has, I think, domestic violence charges against him, uh, but he's still a little harder. But one of them was trying to grab his gun. They, they attacked him. He fires. He kills two of them. And, you know, and, and this is the description of him. So that's what happened. Right. And again, I'm not making a hero out of him. I think he should have stayed home. It was a silly thing to do, but he was under attack. He was under attack by very bad people, white people. Here is how the left wing media now the the normal uh, the normal mainstream media, let's call it, also was bad, but not as bad as the left wing media. Let's cut three. Kenosha shooter Kyle Rittenhouse. He murdered two people, by the way. Rittenhouse is basically what you would have had in a school shooter. He's a 17-year-old kid. He shouldn't have had a gun. He crossed state lines to supposedly protect property. No, he was going out to shoot people. Kyle Rittenhouse, the 17-year-old vigilante. Kyle Rittenhouse, the vigilante. Kyle Rittenhouse, the armed teenage vigilante. A 17-year-old vigilante, arguably a domestic terrorist, picked up a rifle, drove to a different state to shoot people. Kyle Rittenhouse, a guy who's deeply racist, went with weapons to a Black Lives Matter protest, looking to get in trouble. He did. He murdered a couple of people. Rittenhouse, uh, the 17 year old kid, just running around, shooting and killing protesters. You see the 17 year old who was radicalized by Trumpism, took his AR-15 to Kenosha and became a killer. A white Trump supporting, MAGA loving, uh, Blue Lives Matter social media uh, uh, partisan, 17 years old, picks up a gun, drives from one state to another with the intent to shoot people. You know, there's still something naive in me, as ancient as I am, that when I look at this, I do not understand how people can do it. I don't understand how you can look yourself in the mirror to shave and and know that you're looking at a person who said th- those things that have... If, if nothing else, if nothing else, aside from being utter lies, they, they have no nuance. How do you know what he what his motives were? Because he supported Trump. You know, he's a white, you know, and the, and all the people involved are white. So they're all troublemakers, right? They're all all of the people involved are white. And I'll get to that in just a minute. But from the very start, social media essentially banned people who defended Rittenhouse. Even now, according to the blaze, Facebook has banned users uh, from sharing a crowdfunding link to assist with the legal fees for Kyle Rittenhouse. But why? 
Why can't he be defended? They've defended. They let all kinds of people get defense funds. He hasn't been convicted. He's innocent until proven guilty at the very least, at the very least. At this point, the trial has made an absolute monkey out of the prosecutor. I mean, he looks like an idiot. It doesn't look like they've got anything on the kid. So why, you know, why are people, why is this, why the silence? Well, the silence, obviously, the obvious reason is the silence is because of the lies. All right. So the third man he shot is only wounded. He's shot in the arm. His name is Gage Grosskreutz. And they keep calling him a trained paramedic. He was a paramedic before he went to college or something like this. He's a Black Lives Matter activist. He belongs to revolutionary groups that have attacked the police. He was arrested a couple of days before this incident for lurking around a police station. He has been convicted for brandishing a firearm while drunk. You know, this is not a guy. So so he goes on and they they cross-examine him. And this is what he said. He's also carrying a firearm at this protest which he is part of. And this is what he says on the stand. It wasn't until you pointed your gun at him, advanced on him, with your gun, now your hands down, pointed at him, that he fired, right? Correct. (laughs) So now he goes on the next morning. They immediately have him on ABC. Clean up on aisle four. They have him on ABC this morning and they interview him. He says, well, that's that. uh, No, no, no. He takes it all back because now he's not under oath, right? So now he's not going to go to prison for lying. He takes it all back. But the interviewer never says to him, he says, what were you doing with a gun? He does ask him that, but he never says to him, what? Why were you there? Right. We, we know because all those guys on MSNBC told us we know that Kyle Rittenhouse was a MAGA supporting white supremacist uh, killer just, who went out to shoot people. We know that because they made it up out of their heads. But we don't know why he was there. I mean, the guy is a Black Lives Matter activist. That's what he is. So he was obviously part of the demons, that peaceful demonstration that burned the city to the ground. So ultimately, the defense decided they're going to put the defendant on the stand. Now, a lot of people say that you shouldn't put a defendant on the stand. It's too big a risk. But that's actually not true in murder trials. Uh, This is something I learned from covering courts. And I just read the other day that Andy McCarthy, who is a great, great uh, legal writer over at NRO, uh, Andy McCarthy said the same thing. But I but I knew this before is that you don't you you put the guy on the stand because the people, the jury wants to look at him and say, is that guy a killer? Uh, So they put him on the stand. And Rittenhouse tells his side of the story. It's cut nine. People were saying, cranium him, get him, kill him. People were screaming, and I just was trying to get to the police running down Sheridan Road. And you say, I'm trying to get to the police. Why were you trying to get to the police? Because I didn't do anything wrong. I defended myself. And finally, he just breaks down emotionally. It's cut ten. Once I take that step back, I look over my shoulder and... Mr. Rosenbaum, Mr. Rosenbaum was now running from my right side, um, and I was cornered from in front of me with Mr. Zeminski, and there were <laughs> there were three. <laughs> People right there. This is deep breath, Kyle. <laughs> That's what I. <laughs> That's what I run. <laughs> so, just a for a, a lighter moment. Um, Stephen Crowder, the great Stephen Crowder, our pal, uh, was ban- banned from Facebook because the left started making fun of Kyle Rittenhouse, saying he faked tears and who cares if he's crying and all this stuff. And Crowder put on Facebook, if you accuse Kyle Rittenhouse of faking tears from being forced to rel- relive the trauma of having to shoot violent armed child rapists and arsonists, but you claim PTSD from being called the wrong pronouns, you may be an ale. <laughs> <laughs> and they banned him. I thought he said you might be. He only said you might be, which I think was incredibly polite, given it was Crowder. You see how complete it is, though? From day one, beyond day one, 
in the context of a big lie, that the police are the enemies of black people instead of the protectors of black people. A cop is lied about. A wounded man is lied about. They start a riot through their lies. A kid goes into the riot and gets attacked by criminals who are white, and he's a white supremacist. It's an empire of lies, and in an empire of lies, fear is is king. The idea is to make you afraid. Don't speak the moral truth. Don't call things what they are. Call evil good. Call good evil. Don't give your opinion. Don't defend yourself if you're under attack. Don't stop the criminals. Don't call the criminals criminals. Fear your own judgments, your own morality, your gender, your lungs, your health, your truth. Courage is the virtue without which there is no virtue. So courage is what's under attack, and it's under attack every step of the way, everywhere we turn, by these liars, by the emperors of the empire of lies. You have to learn Donald Trump is not going to save you. Vatican's not going to save you. It has to be us. You are the culture, too. Everything you say, everything you do, what you teach your children, what you show your fellow workers, what you show your friends, what you do on the street, it is all part of the culture. You have to stand up. You have to speak the truth. You have to, politely but constantly. Or you can be afraid, because then you'll have no virtue, and then the world belongs to them. If you want more great content, like us and subscribe, and we'll give it to you.